chance, you bastard. Time to impress my inner Alison Tabitha. So as you can see, we are going to be starting off with making that pickaxe. I will be using a former packing box using one of the folds. You can absolutely carve this pickaxe out as a whole, but I just personally chose to do this in two separate constructions. I wanted the pickaxe to have its own length of shape, which I still probably could have achieved using the body of the box, but I just personally chose to do it this way. So as you can see by the image on my phone, I was following a basic shape and I was drawing and redrawing a bunch of off the center lines lines so that when I do to get to cutting I can then decide on a final shape as I'm cutting along so as you can now see the final cutout mark yes there is a bunch of lines everywhere so as I'm cutting it along I actually cut just outside of the line that I chose to go with. You always want to cut just a tad thicker than what you originally drew in. That way whatever you know shape you're making has a lot more stability and won't be as floppy. So cutting about halfway along the first longer side of the blade, once I do reach the other side, now they cut it up along the smaller end of the blade. So by the time I get to this little bend or ditch in the shape, I actually cut straight across. So by the time I have the piece free, as you now see, I don't take out that little tiny corner bits just to finalise the hilt, not the hilt, the blade and the top half of the pickaxe shape keeping the lines as curved as possible so there's no rough edges and that is the top half of the pickaxe done or the basic shape of it anyway so with another cardboard piece I then measured up against my leg in wholesome shape it would at least come down to knee length maybe calf length just depending how short you are so about a quarter of the way down from the top of end of the shape, there is a bit of a bend for a counteraction of usage. So obviously when you slam this into a rock or whatever you're climbing up, there is a little bit of a bend in the pickaxe. It just helps for a better stability. Not that I've ever used one, but gathering from Lara's um, climbing skills, that's what the bend in the pickaxe was for. But by the time it got to the middle of the uh, handle itself or the body of it, I ended up drawing straight down the cover box in a more straight line and then going in with the handle or this time with the hilt and drawing in little details like little handle grip details. I should have measured up against my fingers but by the time I was holding it in my hand it was a decent fit as is. I have small fingers but it really didn't matter about the handle. I was going to be hanging off my pants as it is so once I was satisfied with the shape that I finalised I then obviously cut it out. When it came to the smaller end of the details, like the handle details, the smaller, harder to access points of the shape, I actually left them for last, getting rid of the majority of the larger shapes just to cut out the body of it. And then once I got down to the hilt side of it, I then enclosed my scissors in a bit more to really focus on carving out the handle shape. When it comes to the small end of things, leave them for last because they're going to be a lot harder to carve out. You want to get rid of the majority of the larger scale of what you're cutting out and that is obviously much easier. So that is now officially the body of the pickaxe done measuring up against with the blade side of it and the lines actually made up perfectly I thought they wouldn't which surprised me so once I was satisfied with how the whole thing looks in conclusion it's basically a basic idea 
I then used the hot glue gun by making a small gap at the top of the body of it, attaching the head to the body of the pickaxe obviously. Now going in with the paint job, I am using a face paint, which you can obviously use any type of red paint that you have. And obviously I'm colouring in the body, including the attaching head part of it. And draw the line of where the hilt starts. Also making sure to fill in the edges. And I do go through two layers on both sides, especially because the hind side had a little text left on it. So now going in with the acrylic paint that my sister used when she made her Shadow Hunters weapons. So this happens to have a bit of gradient on the reference image, so using a bit of silver to fill in the blades and then painting over the red just to give that gradient effect. But on the other side, the longer side, it's a lot more uniform. Now I did go through two layers of this silver. Then filling in the hilt with black. Just now getting on with the intricate details, adding a black circle at the top to resonate for holes. Then bumping up my brush and whatever part remained, adding some pattern lines, more black circles and some silver at the very bottom to make it look like a ring. I would assume it's a ring that you use to attach the pickaxe to your clothes. Now going in with this wig, so I actually ordered some fake bangs of the same length online but it's taking forever to arrive in the mail and I grew impatient. So cutting up a wig I don't mind hacking up. So sectioning out a chunk of bangs of a size that I'm satisfied with. Tying off the rest just to keep it out of the way. And then tying off the bangs again at the front. And then cutting these bangs out, out in shape in a very rounded shape. About as rounded as I can manage. And if you are wondering, this wig is from Light in the Box. It's actually the wig I use for my Nina, Nina Debrev Triple Alexander Cage premiere inspired look that I did many years ago. So now that we've got our piece carved out, I'm just using a crocodile clip to hold the bangs in place. And with this cutting skill, I am cutting out on a diagonal angle but going downwards so that the front is shorter than what the back is. And precisely the same thing on the other side. And yes, all stylists out there, I am using hydrocensors. So now working in subsections and doing precisely the same thing again, diagonal cutting downwards and aggressively cutting inwards. At first I was cutting inwards at the very end of the hair but then I decided to start taking it a bit more to the body of it, brushing it through now and again to see how the hair is laying and also chipping into the hair itself because I wanted to give the bangs some on the surface layering while also trying to take out a lot of the bulk as well and give the bangs a lot of shape and movements per the layered effects. So a lot of downward cutting, a lot of point cutting and a lot of chipping. So to help give the bangs a bit more extra sturdy grip, I just added two one-touch clips and precisely the same thing again on the other side. Subsection cutting, point cutting and chipping cutting. And always brushing through to see how it is laying so far. Once I'm finally satisfied with the overall shape in the end. And like, as you can also see, I did pull my hair up into a, a ponytail just so we can see how it's looking with a pony, much less with braids. Using some hairspray now, obviously, um, for spraying some on my hand, just to help give the bangs some hold and texture. And now doing some more surface layering. And I am making sure to use a scraping motion with the scissors so I don't accidentally cut off too big of chunks. Flora appears to have a lot of layers through her front of her bangs, but I was also doing this technique to cut out a lot of the bulk. Well, also, obviously, it's two, bir two birds with one stone, as morbid as that phrase is. <laughs> it's just to help give the bangs a lot of shape and take out the block as well. So now we're back with this pickaxe again. I'm taking the same silver and taking it over the hilt, just to give it a gun little grey shade. Because it isn't entirely black, it is just more of a dark grey, a very, very dark grey. 
Now working on the holster, I actually brought a belt from my mum's wardrobe and I discovered the hard way that belts, leather belts and hot glue guns do not go well together. So now, whilst I was waiting for the holster to dry or cool off more specifically, I was taking these hair extension clips from my current Foxy Locks ones, these spare clips that they come in the package. And I was hot gluing them to the bangs just so I could have a little bit more of security and grip when I place this on again. I was almost going to be happy with just using uh, bobby pins, but these extension clips work out better. So testing out the sizing and the placement of it. And it sits nicely. Though I didn't touch it properly so I readjusted the placement. So now with this holster, as soon as I put the lightweight fake gun into it, the weight was a bit too much and the glue just broke apart. But otherwise that's the final product in initially. So because of the hot glue failing miserably, ironically, I just used two safety pins. Subtle. But otherwise that is the holster done. Or the main point of it. Because I got this main holster from a eBay package, uh, when I was sliding onto my leg, I moved my leg around the wrong way and I completely tore off the belt that goes around the leg. So looking at reference images to see, because I was about to purchase a new one, an actual holster, I noticed that this man's leg was actually using his twine-like material and I realised I got the same material. So now I'm cutting two holes in the bottom of the holster, obviously on the inside. And threading the twine material, material through it and that was going to be my new uh, holster lower belt portion that's great grammar and then retwine that around my leg and it worked out so much better plus it looks very subtle and now for the bow I actually got the stick from my backyard and using the same string that you would use when you're making a skirt or an the shoulder top just for that flexibility and elasticity so I'll put those two together and I got myself a Lara Croft bow and as for the quiver I got the quiver off the internet with real leather but I just added a, an additional belt to hold it in so I can wear it over my shoulders and as for these arrows I actually got these arrows from eBay and they are quite pointy and sharp but as I discovered I can't penetrate a tree with it but you could probably do damage to a person not that I recommend it so this is how it all looks in conclusion on with the belts the quiver the arrows in it and using the bow itself to hold the arrows upwards because my god this quiver was the bane of my existence I'm sure there was a much better more effective way of wearing this quiver but I don't have a clue I was only wearing it for the sake of cosplay so now adding these bandages from my mum's collection because of all the injuries she's ever had from karate so it's adding a significant amount of bandage around the like about two maybe three wraps and then folding it in on itself so about three rounds of this middle top and bottom So that is the wholesome Alara Croft bow done, or at least her, you know, first weapon of choice when she found her hanging off the corpse. Because obviously she does get like a couple of weapon upgrades as she goes along. And now to make the radio. So making this radio I decided to go in with my famously achieved cardboard box method. It's actually the same cardboard box from the pickaxe, just obviously a different angle, duh. So shaping out the you know, body shape then adding on the either volume or on off dial as well as the receiving point of it receiver dial or whatever you want to call it then carving out the whole shape of course getting rid of the majority of the excess cardboard and then i go back through and i carve out the um, most likely on off dial or volume dial as well as the receiver Yes, as you can see in the background there, just past the box is a more blow up version of a pickaxe. I did get this off eBay as well, 
But by the time it arrived, Mel said that the paint would not hold well on this plastic material, so that's why I decided to get crafty using cardboard instead, and obviously it worked out so much better. So now working on the paint job again, I'm going to be painting it all black using the same black acrylic paint. And at this point I was using a bobby pin just to hold the cardboard in place to also avoid getting paint on my fingers because it is acrylic paint I really didn't want to score it on my skin. And then flipping it over and colouring in the other side as well. And I also take care of the edges as well. So now taking some yellow face paints, the same brand as the red, I'm now adding in the yellow detailing on the screen, pretty much where the buttons are as well. So once the yellow dried, I then went in with the silver screen, using the same silver paint. And then adding three black dots, three at the top, two at the bottom. And I didn't really bother with the button detailing. So now to pull the rest of me together, I am adding in some hair extensions from my Foxy Lux set. I'm using this white and beige hair tie because Laura does have a whitish hair tie in her hair. So once my hair is pinned back, I then use some heat spray and straighten my hair through because her hair is straight. Using some coconut oil to smooth over the ponytail. Then going in with my foundation from Maybelline Fit Me in Classic Ivory. Using my XA Beauty brush to fix up a base, obviously. And going in with some of my, I don't actually remember, I think it's designer brands, powder to obviously set my foundation. So this is my reference image for not only the makeup but also the brows, even though she's pulling a surprised expression. Her brows are pretty much pencil thin, about as thin as this pencil I'm using actually. So I was just drawing this about no less than one third of an inch above my actual brow. Keeping it relatively straight, but of course, depending on her expression, it will also look a tad arch. But for the most part, I'm just keeping it somewhat straight. Then taking this round shade from Peach Palette on the top right side, using my ABH Dura Brow Brush, the fluffier side, to add this shade onto my eyelid and whatever it got into my crease, so be it. As well as my lower lash line, then taking this lighter brown shade and adding a small amount of it onto my nose just to contour a bit. Because Laura's nose is just a teensiest bit smaller than mine. So I'm just adding some contouring shading. And because of how surprisingly strong this colour was, despite all that blending, I then went in with that paler eyeshadow shade and just softened up the contrast of it. As well as the bridge of my nose just to give it some highlight, as well as my brow bone. And taking this darker, it's like a more red undertone black, just sliding up my lower lash line as well as my upper lash line. I'm using my shirt as like a eyeshadow guard. So I kept this smoky eye very, very obviously smoky. Now going in with my Maybelline Lash Sensation and obviously filling in my lashes, top and bottom. Now going in with these two beige nude tones, 
which isn't too far off locally from X A Beauty. So just filling in the basic shape of my lips and just mostly giving the outer corner of my lips some more accentuation but following the exact shape of my top lip. And then adding this more nude paler shade onto the center of my lip to give some highlight. And just adding some blush, some barely there blush. Adding the extensions back on. And adding some more bobby pins just for additional security. So now adding in some blue contacts and you're probably thinking, Laura doesn't have blue eyes, she either has brown or hazel eyes. And you would be right, but Angelina Jolie's version had blue eyes. This concludes my version of the 2013 gameplay. Necklace is from the same website as the holster, eBay. Pants from Big W, white singlet from Big W, very shirt I already had. Thank you all so much for watching, I really do hope you enjoy it and I shall see you all in my future videos. Bye!